What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Michael Chandler still eyeing fight with Conor McGregor. Ever since Michael Chandler made his UFC debut, the former Bellator MMA champion has continued to seek out the biggest possible fights. Following his third round submission loss to Dustin Poirier at UFC 281 this past weekend, Chandler once again sought out a big potential fight with former two division champion Conor McGregor. Chandler spoke at the post fight press conference to discuss where he wants to go from here and why he hopes his path collides with McGregor when the Irish superstar returns to the octagon. Uh, I don't think I'm the easiest fight that he could take, but I do think I'm the biggest fight that he could take. I think. Conor McGregor stepping back in the octagon does does big numbers no matter what. But he and I step inside the octagon, we do staggering numbers. You know, I do think that. Um, and I respect him. Um, we'll love to see him come back. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe I'm the guy that he comes back and fights. Of course, this isn't the first time Chandler has called for a fight with McGregor. After his knockout win over Tony Ferguson earlier this year at UFC 274, Chandler called out McGregor. At the time, it wasn't publicized that McGregor would have to undergo a six-month testing period under USADA in order to come back. Now, however, knowing that a potential fight between the two would have to take place at least six months out, Chandler is eager for the former champ to re-enter the USADA testing pool. As it turns out, McGregor has been back in the gym at SBG Ireland, where he got his start in MMA so many years ago. In a series of Instagram posts, the former champ can be seen doing some pretty intense training and live grappling rounds. When McGregor is ready to return to the octagon, do you want to see him fight Chandler? Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Alex Pereira gives cornermen credit following knockout win over Adesanya. In the main event of UFC 281, former two-division glory kickboxing champion Alex Pereira won UFC gold by defeating Israel Adesanya in the final round of their highly anticipated showdown. Although Pereira had his moments in the first four rounds, the last stylebender was ahead on the all three judges' scorecards. Between the fourth and fifth round, Pereira's cornermen, including former UFC light heavyweight champion Glover Teixeira, kept it real with him. In a scene reminiscent of Leon Edwards' corner, prior to his knockout win over Kamar Usman, Pereira's corner didn't mince words, with a clear message to their fighter that he needed to get a knockout if he wanted to leave New York the champion the cornerman made sure Pereira was ready to go all out when the round started. Immediately, it became apparent that Pereira was going to follow his team's advice and press the action while searching for the knockout that had thus far eluded him. After he was finally able to win the fight, Pereira spoke about the candid conversation he had with his corner between rounds that ultimately led to the knockout. He spoke via translator backstage following the win, saying, I knew it was going to be a very hard fight. I tried to pace myself, but going into the last round, my corners and Glover kept it real with me. I looked at him and said, do I have to knock him out? And Glover said, you do have to knock him out. And then I said, okay, let's do it. As Pereira admitted, he was hurt by the combination Adesanya landed at the end of the first round. Despite being wobbled, he said he was ultimately able to use the moment as a tool to help him be even sharper throughout the rest of the fight. In the wake of the fight, it sounds as though a rematch between these two men is likely the next move for the UFC. Stay tuned for updates as they become available. Dana White weighs in on Dominic Reyes' brutal knockout loss. At UFC 281, former light heavyweight title contender Dominic Reyes was eager to end his three-fight skid inside the octagon. Unfortunately for Reyes, his fight with Ryan Spann was an incredibly one-sided affair. As Reyes looked to close the distance, he ate a power jab from Spann and was immediately put to sleep. Given the fact that Reyes has now lost four straight fights while also being on the wrong side of three straight knockouts, Many questioned whether it was time for him to hang up the gloves. At the post-fight press conference, UFC President Dana White was asked about the situation. After admitting that Reyes hasn't looked the same since his controversial decision loss to John Jones in 2020, White was asked about his future with the promotion, to which he replied, I don't know. I don't know right now. You know, um, I, I think I think first and foremost, I would see what he wants to do. You know, what does he want to do and where is he at mentally and what's he thinking? Reyes has had a rough go since dropping the controversial decision to Jones at UFC 247. In his next fight, the promotion booked him to fight Jan Blachowicz for the title Jones had just vacated. Unfortunately for Reyes, the chance to capture the title once again escaped him as he was on the wrong end of a vicious TKO. The following year, the losing streak continued as he stepped into the cage against Yuri Prohaska, where he was brutally knocked out with a spinning elbow in the second round. 
For his part, Reyes is taking the loss in stride. He took to Instagram after the fight to let everyone know he was okay and simply rushed the fight. Despite the loss, he vowed to be back. Whether or not the UFC plans to give him another fight, of course, remains to be seen. Before we continue, make sure you give that like button some love and be sure to subscribe to the MMA Zone for all of the latest news. Dustin Poirier wasn't happy with Michael Chandler's blatant fouls. On the main card of UFC 281, Dustin Poirier and Michael Chandler fought in the People's Main Event as the two men went to war for nearly 15 minutes. Although the fight was an incredibly back and forth one, there were two moments where it appeared as though Chandler was closing in on a finish. As Poirier pointed out post-fight, in both instances, Iron Mike was committing pretty blatant fouls. The first came during a grappling exchange early on, where Chandler took the back of his opponent before looking for a rear naked choke. As he fought to get his arm under the chin of Poirier, he appeared to dig his fingers into the mouth of the diamond. The second foul came later in the fight during a grappling exchange, where Chandler seemed to be closing in on a TKO win while landing punches to the back of Poirier's head. Despite a warning from Dan Murigliata, Chandler appeared to land several more illegal strikes. After the fight, both men were asked about a verbal exchange they had in the octagon post-fight. Unsurprisingly, the two men recalled their conversation following the fight quite different from one another. I told him this is my house. That's what I told him. I said, this is my house. You know, that's it. And I told him he's a dirty mother too for putting, his fing for putting his fingers in my mouth and blowing his nose and you know, it's all good. On the flip side of things, Chandler declined to shed light on the conversation between the two, but did admit that his fingers accidentally ended up in Poirier's mouth. At the same time, he explained that he believes he was landing clean shots on Poirier's ear rather than the back of his head. While addressing the situation, Chandler made it clear that he isn't a cheater. What did you think about the fight and the fouls? Give us your thoughts in the comments below. And now for our breaking news story of the day. Zhang Wei Li eyes title defense in China. In the co-main event of UFC 281, Zhang Wei Li picked up one of the biggest wins of her career as she reclaimed the women's strawweight title by defeating Carla Esparza. It was an incredibly impressive and dominant display from Zhang as she ultimately managed to secure a submission win in the very second round. Following the fight, Zhang Wei Li spoke to media members to discuss the win as well as where she plans to go from here. She spoke through a translator to reveal her plan for a title defense in China next year as the result of MMA booming in popularity over the recent years. I think since I won the belt the first time, there are more and more Chinese people, more girls, more women starting to participate in the sport. MMA has developed very fast in China from the UFC PI Shanghai in China in 2019. I also want to say thanks to the UFC. They give all the fighters and this sport massive support, like the UFC PI. So far, no word yet as to who the first contender to step up to the plate will be. As it stands right now, Rose Namajunas is the number one contender at 115 pounds. Given that she holds two wins over the champion, however, the UFC could be hesitant to book an immediate trilogy fight between the two. Another name that fight fans have pointed to is Amanda Lemos, who sits at the number three spot on the official rankings, with a professional record of 13, two, and one. Lemos has been on a tear since 2019, losing only once over the last three years. Who do you want to see fight for the title next? Give us your thoughts in the comments below. Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.